Welcome to Books on Point. Africa Reimagined is an appeal for rediscovery of our African identity, going beyond the problems of a single country. Tlumelo Bigo calls for a reorientation of values on a continental scale to suit the needs and priorities of Africans. He joins us live from Cape Town to talk about his new book titled Africa Reimagined. Tlumelo, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Let's talk about the rationale of putting the book together. What prompted this idea? Thank you for chatting to me. I wrote this book really just out of the um, respect for how difficult it is in this country and in this continent to be both successful in yourself because of all of the different challenges that we are facing as professionals, as young people trying to uh, get from kind of one economic state to the other and doing that while retaining the Africanness that we have and doing that in an environment that's supportive. And many of us have found it challenging to do so, and that's why I thought, let me think big picture about uh, some of the things that are the biggest challenges, and how do we marry those challenges with the opportunities that uh, we can bring to the table. There's some fascinating historical insights. I mean, you've referenced, uh, you know, the slave movement from Africa and how, um, you know, America was built in various examples and, and taken uh, some learnings from certain philosophers, etc. Take me through the research process of this book. How long did it take to put together? Well, writing a book is more about reading than writing. Uh, so it probably took uh, three, three and a half years to do the research. Um, and about uh, six to seven months to finalize the writing process. All right. So let's and talk. My yeah. approach is always my approach is always to try and put myself in the position of a reader and 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 follow the journey, um, not presuppose what people know, but actually try and put together the whole journey as I've experienced it. All right. So when it comes to chapter one, uh, and that's titled Normalizing Abnormality, you talk about the political struggle for African nations, uh, particularly the liberation from colonialism, has been misjudged as a struggle purely for the attainment of liberal democracy. Talk to me about that theme and in what alternative ways we should be looking at liberal democracy. Yeah, I think what people have been struggling for everywhere in Africa has been um, uh, liberty and the right to be who they want to be. Um, and that means the right to speak your language, the right to worship the God that you want to worship, and the ability to bring your own talents into the economy. And to do that, you, you need to generally be both free or have liberty, and at the same time, you need to be empowered. And these are the two things that uh, we find in many African countries haven't come with liberation. So the country has been liberated, but the individuals still find themselves in uh, certain degrees of bondage. And this bondage may not be uh, legal at the moment. It might be bondage by fact of not having some of the things that other citizens have in your country. And so we uh, are really seeing the struggle move from a uh, struggle to have the right to vote, to a struggle to have the right to participate in economies, have the right to bring our personalities, all of our personalities as a whole, into the work environment and not feel like we have to be somebody else when we're at the workplace because we're not free to be ourselves. And I suppose one can't talk about reimagining Africa without taking in uh, African leaders and the contribution they make and should be making towards the African continent. From your perspective, when you look at African leaders and the way they lead their, you know, their citizens, what more can be done to make sure that we actually are reimagining Africa in a sense of abundance and prosperity the way we would want to imagine it? So I, I identify three things that we need to give citizens around the continent. Um, the first is we need to deliver institutions that work. And institutions, it's a fancy word for rules of the game uh, that people have to adhere to. And that's been very difficult on the African continent, as you've seen with uh, many of the countries struggling with uh, corruption, uh, struggling with uh, the lack of a rule of law. So institution building is one of the things that I think our leaders have to focus on. The second one is to make sure that from those institutions we can provide order. 
And order is really critical for entrepreneurs, for people that are planning to make investments, whether it's their time or money. And I think we've struggled on the continent, but we're getting there in terms of creating some order because the third thing is predictability. We found that if uh, citizens can predict what the rules of the game require them to do, uh, so in order to educate themselves, in order to invest time and money in a particular profession, the outcome is more productive, faster growing economies. And so it's easier said than done, but I think our leaders have to focus on those three things in order to enable uh, citizens to really bring out the best out of themselves. And something else that people might think is easier said than done is the fourth industrial revolution that everybody is talking about. In fact, I don't think you can get to a single piece of media or go to any kind of conference without anybody talking about the fourth industrial revolution, particularly in the context yes. of Africa as to whether we're ready for it or we're not. From your perspective, Africa and the fourth industrial revolution put together, what do you see? You know, the fourth industrial revolution is about um, the ability of people to creatively use technology in order to innovate for what customers want. And there are no more creative people than there are on the African continent. I mean, that's one thing that we are world renowned for, our creativity, and that creativity can play itself out in many arenas. In the area of IT, our problems are on the infrastructure side. South Africa is one of the better countries in terms of what we have. Uh, countries like Rwanda have done well as well in terms of building uh, a basic infrastructure for Wi-Fi and things of that nature so that citizens can participate in this fourth industrial revolution. But it happens at two levels. The first is government needs to bring the social infrastructure and that social infrastructure allows citizens to then begin to innovate around it. And that innovation knows no bounds once people are given the tools and so these days kids are studying programming um, in junior school um, and that is going to be a critical language to speak to the rest of the world so the fourth industrial revolution is about learning new languages whether it is in the science and technology area um, continuing to expand on the level of of coding and math literacy that you need and and then being creative um, in terms of of uh, developing content and developing material that allows people to uh, use these new technologies to take it to the next level. And one of the big things that we need in Africa is to have a single market which is going to allow us to test products, to test uh, services, and that will then make us globally competitive. And I think where our leaders have done well is creating a new free trade agreement which is continent-wide, and I think that's going to bode us well from a 4IR point of view. All right, Shumila, I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. That is Shumila Biko with his book, Africa Reimagined, which you can find at your nearest bookstore. Our recommended book for the week is titled 90 Rules for Entrepreneurs by Marnus Brodrijk. It is the Codex of the Hustle, a book on lessons that he wished someone had shared with him earlier, lessons that will help you push harder based on Marnus' real business experiences and together with chapters from friends and fellow entrepreneurs. Well, that's a wrap from us. Arabila Gumeta will have your headlines at the top of the hour and your weather details coming up after this. Goodbye.